Hello and welcome to our video module on dynamics. This is the first of a number of video modules where we'll explore the engineering of the moving world. It may involve a particle moving along a frictionless surface all the way up to a spinning satellite in orbit. And I'd like to start off today's conversation with a really simple problem. So you may have seen this before. We have a cart and it's moving along has some mass m and it's moving along to the right with some initial velocity. It's going along this surface and there's really no friction, nothing to slow it down. And I'm going to apply a force acting in such a way that it's going to slow it down. And I want to know over time what is the position as a function of time. However, I'm going to throw a curveball in this. I'm going to tell you that the force varies with time. Now the clear-cut solution of the force decelerating at a constant rate and being able to find the position fairly easily isn't going to help you out right here. That said, we're going to take a step back, use our equations of motion to identify what the position as a function of time is. Once we're able to solve, we're going to look at the strategy we used and see if it applies towards other problems where we're looking at a varying force. That said, let's get started. Now before we write down our equations, there's two things we need to do. First, we need to know what is that force. I'm going to say in this case it's some constant times time, which means you're going to start off pushing against the cart with a really light force, and as it keeps coming towards you, as time goes by, you're going to be pushing harder and harder and harder. The second thing we need to do is draw our free body diagram. We're going to have some sort of uh, normal force pushing up, we're going to have some force of gravity going down acting at the center and then we're going to have our applied force from the right right here. Now we're ready to write our equation and the first equation that comes to mind is probably F equals MA and in fact this is exactly where we want to start. I should point out that the F in the teal F equals MA equation is meant to indicate the sum of all the forces. It is not by definition the same as the force that's being applied in this problem. In this particular case, they do end up being the same, but that's more a peculiar characteristic of this problem than a general rule. We can also write this as mv dot. At its heart, F equals ma is a differential equation, and we're going to need to use that information to solve this problem. The second equation that's going to help us out is x dot equals v. From force, we can find out what the velocity is. From the velocity, we can then find out what the position is. So let's go ahead and solve this. We'll start off with saying that the forces, the applied forces, are negative CT, and that's a CT applied in the negative X direction. Let's go ahead and make our coordinate axis like this, Z coming towards us, and that's going to equal M V dot, which is also M DV DT. So this is a great start. Does this make sense? As time goes by, this is telling us that as time goes by, the acceleration is going to get bigger and bigger. The force is going to get bigger and bigger in the negative direction. That fits with the way we set things up here. A great first step is to isolate dV. And if we try doing that, we get negative C over M T dt equals dV. Now we're ready to find velocity as a function of time by integrating. We'll integrate both sides, use dummy variables here, and integrate from 0 to t on the left, and the velocity at time equals 0 is v0, and the velocity at some final time is v of t. We find that equals v of t minus v0 on the right, and on the left we have negative c over m times t squared over 2 minus 0 squared over 2. I just put this down as a placeholder for you to remember to always use both of these limits on your integral. Of course, this will go to zero. That said, we found velocity as a function of time equals negative c over m t squared over 2 plus v naught. The next step we're going to take is we're going to take a look at, we're going to solve for position. We know velocity is x dot or that is dx dt. Now let's isolate dx. dx equals negative c over m t squared over 2 dt plus 
V naught dt. Once again, we'll integrate from initial x naught to final x of t on the right and integrate on the left from 0 to t. Integrate from 0 to t and this time I'll leave out the 0 when I evaluate the integrals and we get negative c over m. Let's put that 2 over here. 2m t cubed over 3 plus v naught t equals x of t minus x naught. We'll get x of t by itself and simplify a little bit. And we find that the position as a function of time is negative c over 6m t cubed plus v naught t plus x naught. So by using our initial equation, using or our um, differential equation, solving for it and using the initial conditions, we're able to come up with position as a function of time. And in fact, when we look at varying forces, the strategy or the tactics we use, how we do it step to step is going to vary a little bit, but we're going to follow the basic rules. The first is we're going to identify the proper differential equation to use. And in this case, it's simply F equals MA. That's step one. The second step that we'll do is we'll, the second step is isolating the variables. This will allow us to use calculus to be able to solve it. And then finally, the third step is to take a look at our initial conditions and use them to find the constants of integration. So once again, starting off with a good differential equation, number two, isolating the variables, number three, using our initial condition. Finally, let's take a look at this and see if it kind of feels right, if it makes sense to us. We want the position to be increasing at first, and we see that. We see that this t cubed with a really small t, this is going to be a very small number, and we see that the position is increasing linearly at a really small t's, and then as time gets bigger and bigger, this term gets bigger and bigger. This is the result of all that force you're adding. And remember, you're increasing your force as time goes by. So you expect, the, you expect it to really be wanting to push to the left more and more as time goes by. And in fact, with a really large t, we, say, we see that position as a function of time is governed really by this term right here, and that's going to push it negative. Well, that means that this cart is then later on going to be going in the negative direction once that force gets high enough. And this is consistent with what our intuition tells us. I hope this gives you a little bit of a feel of how to treat problems that have varying forces as a component of the system. In this case, our force varied with time in a simple linear way. It's easy to imagine that it could vary with velocity or position or acceleration or time squared, whatever the case is. In our next video module, we're going to flesh out a couple example problems to get a better feel of how to evaluate this type of situation. Thanks a lot, and I look forward to seeing you then.